I'm Alice Ann Schwab. I'm a longtime member of Market Square Presbyterian Church. And uh, my day job is the executive director of Susquehanna Art Museum in Harrisburg. It is uh, my extraordinary pleasure to be talking today with So Hyun Bae, who is uh, an extraordinary artist. And So Hyun, I will let you uh, tell a little bit about yourself, but let me just first say that you are our April into May Arts in the Square gallery artist at Arts in the Square uh, gallery at Market Square Presbyterian Church. So we are very much looking forward to welcoming you and your work there. Um, I was born in Seoul, Korea. Um, and when I was eight years old, I um, immigrated with my parents and two siblings, an older brother and a sister. Um, to the United States. And basically, I was educated in the West and in America. Um, I went to the Rhode Island School of Design. Uh, I received my BFA. I um, then uh, proceeded to, um, well, no, I mean, took a little time off, but I I uh, received my Master of Fine Arts at Boston University um, because I wanted to work with John Walker, who is an incredible painter, probably one of the best of his generation. And then um, afterward, uh, it wasn't planned, but um, I ended up studying at the Harvard Divinity School because um, of a teacher who transformed my life. Uh, and his name was Elie Wiesel, who thought that I had sensibilities for Jewish mystical thoughts, and he, and he encouraged me to study. You know, we are going to have at Market Square your work that is entitled Four Bows. And uh, I wonder if you would be able to tell us how that piece came about, maybe a little bit about the significance of the bow in Korean culture, if that is explainable uh, to us. I, I hope so. Uh, it was made practically the first year um, I lived abroad in Italy. My family and I moved to Italy in 2003. Vacationing in Italy is, is entirely different than living in Italy day to day. And I had a very tough time um, being East Coast educated and having lived in New York to then try to live in a, uh, uh, it's, it's like a little gem. It's a, it's a beautiful city, um, but it's medieval in many ways. And so not only did I cross a continent, I. I felt like I traveled back in time. Mm -hmm. And as I was trying to maneuver through its bureaucracy, you know, an Italian bureaucracy is, you know, notorious. I envisioned um, moving through a kind of a medieval labyrinth where I, I was bowing and Korean was also written from right to left. So I start at the right. So was Hebrew. Hebrew is also written from right to left. The, the heads are captured in three poses. One is the frontal, which is the frontal face. The second is a half bow. So, you know, the head starting to bow. And then the third is a full bow where the head completely bows. And of course, you have to understand that just a couple of years prior to this, I was painting colossal heads of women of Joseon Dynasty. And I used to do installations of heads of women of Joseon Dynasty, Joseon era, prior to modernization in Korea. Um, so these women, regardless of their social status, uh, wore their hair by um, parting their hair down the center. So if you imagine a kind of an elongated sphere 
uh, that's parted in the center and the head is bowing, uh, the half bow starts to form, you know, the, the parting of the hair and the forehead and what shows, you know, what shows of the nose and the mouth that's foreshortened, it takes on a shape of a serpent, which is a, um, a ceramic bottle where they used to uh, store alcohol, sur, serpent. So it reminded me of um, like a ritual, you know, libation, you know, the pouring, uh, yeah, the pouring of libation, um, like a kind of a serene wastefulness. Uh, it's brought together so many ideas that I had um, in a way that I didn't expect. And that is really where the magic takes place when you make a work of art something that surpasses your imagination. Like, did I ever connect the surpyong, the, you know, the wine, wine bottle with the Joseon Dynasty head? No, never, you know? So, um, so that's what I did. And basically these, the head is bowing and, you know, going back up, bowing and going back up. I don't know if it's too much in the weeds, or not, but um, that concept of the action of the the bow is is something that maybe it's possible to explain. Maybe uh, maybe it doesn't exactly translate, but it is a little bit unknown to uh, I would say to Anglo people, uh, but more, much more common in Korean culture. Well, yeah, I grew up um, bowing. Uh, we call it insa. Um, and it's, I associate it with a familiarity. If you recognize someone on the street, you know, an acquaintance or a friend, family member, certainly, you bow. And you bow to your elders. So the elder would never bow to me, you know. You know, they would say, oh, so anyone me or something like that, you know, and but I would do the bowing and it was a sign of love and respect. Um, I think it's a beautiful gesture. I don't know. It's so natural to me that, you know, I, I it's like um, not knowing the grammar of your native language. You know, you just you're born into it. So you don't question. But when I made this series, the, the, bow, the bow series, uh, I wasn't thinking of um, love and respect, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. I, I was thinking of it in terms of a defiance. Because as I was going through this labyrinth of bureaucracy in Italy, I sensed a, a tinge of racism and sometimes um, I felt drenched in racism. And I, I imagined what it must have been like for my parents when they first arrived in America. And perhaps the same for your Korean congregation when they arrived in Harrisburg for the first time, or how African-Americans uh, must feel after so many generations in America. I, I've personally felt it. I, I never felt it in America because when I immigrated, I was only eight years old. And within six months, I learned English. Not because I was special, all kids at that age, you know, it takes about six months. And then I became my parents' translator. And I think about that girl and my heart goes out to her because she had to decipher what to trans what to translate and what not to translate and she heard a lot of things and 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 sometimes um some slurs you know and she was thinking what are you saying um do you know who my parents are you know, do you know that my father is the chief editor of Tonga Broadcasting, you know, who fought against the dictator 
for democracy. Do you know that my mother was a professor at Nihua University? You know, do you know that my father was responsible for bringing Western music into Korea for the first time? Do you, do you know that they're the kindest people in the world? You know, um, who are you to say these things to my parents? So I had to edit through and, um, and that was painful for me, but I never felt it directly. And I think because I, that was because I was a child, you know, I spoke the language. I don't know, maybe because I was an Asian girl as opposed to a boy, I don't know. Um, but in Italy, I felt for the first time what my parents must have felt. Uh, so I thought instead of um, foregoing my tradition um, of bowing, I would celebrate it. You know, you can be who you are, but I will remain the same. And so in that sense, I, I thought of it as a form of defiance. Um, against what I felt was, you know, injustice. Yeah. I am so glad you were able to share that. That's beautiful. I have never thought about the role of the the child, the one who learns the language, it being in that role before. That's, that's very powerful. Um, your experience, I'm sure, is shared by others, and and I'm I'm happy that you were able to share that as difficult um, mm -hmm. as it, it might be. Uh, you know, we we didn't talk about this before, but um, our hope is that this will be shared by uh, English speaking people, uh, people who speak Hangul, uh, and so uh, if you wouldn't, would you have some words that you could share? Uh, with our Korean speaking members of Market Square, many of whom also speak English, but it's just very nice to hear uh, the language of your ancestors, I think. <laughs> you you will be so uh well received at Market Square and we can't wait to have you come to visit with us to be there to experience the opening of uh this show. It's also the the time when we're celebrating 50 years of Korean Americans worshiping together with uh, English-speaking Americans, Anglos, all in the context of one Presbyterian church. Um, it is an unusual thing from what I am told uh, and from my experience. And so we, we're we thrilled to have the opportunity to celebrate it. And um, really uh, very, very, very pleased to have you as a part of that with us. Uh, so. So Hyun, thank you so very much for this time together. Um, I value it, and uh, I can't wait to meet you in person. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you for including me. Um, I, I I feel like it. I can vicariously. I mean, not vicariously. I mean, I will be there in person. But you know, it could just as well have been in Cleveland, Ohio, where we also had um, our Presbyterian congregation. Um, I left, of course, you know, to, uh, you know, go to college, um, but I'm sure it's developed and I, I don't know how much it actually interacts with, you know, non-Korean members at this point, but ultimately that's, that's the point, right? I mean, we are all Christians and, um, it makes sense that an immigrant group would, uh, stay together initially to help one another, you know, to, you know, and due to the limitations of language and whatnot. But, you know, after a few generations, um, it only makes sense to become American and yeah. 
you know, continue. 